And now what we're gonna do is inject her uh, frown lines here. And what we're gonna do is use a little bit of a botulinum toxin just to relax this. And basically in the face, there's one muscle here that pulls everything up and everything else pulls it down. So by relaxing this set of muscles here and here, we'll be able to relax the muscles that pull down and she should get a little bit of an eyebrow lift. And that'll look really nice. Sometimes we go ahead and combine that with a little bit of injection out here. And again, that allows us to relax the muscle that pulls it down here, giving you a lift. So botulinum toxins are all opposites. When you relax the muscle that goes down, you get an elevation. And when you relax the muscles here that hold the eyebrow and eyelid up, you get a droop. So a lot of times I'll see people that come in from other places and what they've done is had injections through here to try and get rid of these lines. And unfortunately what that'll do is drop you. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start. Go ahead and frown, you can feel a little pinch. What we like to use here are these very, very small uh, microscopic needles to place the uh, pro protein perfectly where it belongs, pinch. It also decreases the discomfort. And we have a few other things that we do here that make it much more comfortable for the patient. In general, no matter which product we're using, we try and do about five or six injection sites and that gives us a very nice pattern. How you doing? So you can see it's a fairly simple injection. What we're doing is using these uh, imported needles from Japan, and they're so small you can barely see them. We go through a lot of these. Um, the other things that sometimes we'll use are insulin syringes, again, because they're very small and very comfortable. Minimal, minimal, minimal bruising. You'll see a little bit of fluid there, and you'll see just five little fluid bumps. And what that is, is it's this saline or salt water that we use to reconstitute or mix up the uh, toxins. And most of the ones that are available today um, are similar in that respect. Some of the newer ones will come pre-mixed. Raise your eyebrows for me. So again, this is one muscle here called the frontalis that's pulling everything up. In her, it's giving her these lines, but uh, they're not that deep and we don't really want to ever go below the bottom third. If we go below here, she'll get an eyelid heaviness. Okay, go ahead and reach up, lift up for me. Little pinch, sorry. And so in contrast with some of the other injections we do, what I'm doing here is spreading the protein out evenly with tiny, tiny, tiny injections. We're not gonna get every single line, but we're gonna clean up the neighborhood, make her look a little bit more relaxed and less stressed. How we doing? So I'm taking my time here and going along, trying to make sure that the body of the muscle is relaxed and that she still has something uh, that works to hold her eyebrow up trying to make it as symmetric as possible. And again, that's a pretty easy injection. You okay? Mm -hmm. So that's how we treat the frontalis or forehead muscles. Um, and that's how we do the frown lines or glabella. But it's very, very easy to do. The only thing is you have to know where you're going and use the right amount of product. There are many different products available today from Botox to Dysport to Juvo to Xeomin, and they're pretty, pretty interchangeable to some degree. You just have to understand the differences between them and correct for some dosage. There are some subtle differences that we'll also talk about in the next part. So you should be perfect for that.
Okay, so let's see. So what we'll do now is we'll talk about the different types of botulinum toxins. Of course, there's one called Botox. It's been around for more than 20 years and been approved for cosmetic use. Um, and it's, it's been one of the ones that everybody starts with. Now there's all kinds of other products available. Uh, and it's really a lot like Coke and Pepsi. So there's all kinds of things that we can do with each of the different ones. And sometimes we add them together to get different effects. Um, sometimes we'll use different products in different regions in the same person. Um, but there's a lot going on. And as you can see behind me, uh, I've written a book about the use of botulinum toxins. And uh, that book's been used for several years and has now been translated into a few different uh, languages. So uh, the, the first one that we saw approval for in the United States is called Botox and it is a type A botulinum toxin. Uh, it's been around for a while. We use it to treat all kinds of things. I like to use it for what are called the masseter muscles or chew muscles in here in people that have grinding teeth or have a little bit of thickness in the lower half of their face. Um, we use it here in the um, crown lines or glabella, here, here. I like to put a little bit in the chin and in some people that have uh, deep wrinkles around their mouth, we'll put a little bit of botulinum toxin in there too. This uh, next product that was approved is called Dysport. Uh, and that is also a really outstanding product. It is a type A toxin that we use. A lot of people think that it is a little bit more of a diffuse or gentle spread. So we use it in muscles that are a little bit larger and more diffuse. Um, and again, it's really Coke and Pepsi. Some people just absolutely love one product and don't want to go back. Uh, some people rotate. Some people just want to try the next thing. Um, but we have everything in this office. Uh, the next product that was available is called Xeomin. Xeomin is an interesting product. It's also a type A toxin, uh, but unlike the other toxins that are available, it has no carrier protein, so it's referred to as a clean product. Um, we use that in a variety of patients, and again, it's a type A toxin that works pretty, pretty well. And again, feel free to ask questions. We're, we're here to answer whatever you guys have and talk about uh, all of the different toxins. Uh, in addition, we're right now running our uh, beauty week, and this is the last day of beauty week. And to participate in beauty week, all you have to do is call the office at 561-655-9055 and speak to one of the receptionists and they'll walk you through what beauty week has. There are uh, offering some promotions on different injections and lasers and skincare products so that everybody who's quarantined can feel and look better. Uh, let's see, the last product that we'll talk about is uh, Juvo, and Juvo is the most recently uh, released product. It's really a wonderful product like the others, uh, and it is used in the crown lines uh, we think that in the near future they'll get approval for some other areas and that we'll be using it all over the face. Again, your doctor or injector has discretion. Once a product is approved, we can use it in any part of the body um, that we and the patient think is appropriate. So, a lot of times when we see uh, patients with different needs, we'll use the same product um, even though Sometimes it may not be approved for that area. That's considered an off-label use. Um, and I see a lot, of, a lot of my patients and friends are watching. Kristen, uh, thanks for tuning in. If anybody has any questions, please let us know. Be happy to help you answer them. Uh, so lots of the questions that we see are uh, about how long the proteins last. And again, it, it depends on the person. If somebody is a marathon runner, they're going to metabolize the protein and build muscle. Uh, so they probably won't get more than three months. Uh, and if they're doing triathlons, they probably won't even get that. 
if it's a male that's very muscular, we tend to dose them a little bit higher. Um, but in general, if people are getting injected on a sort of routine basis and getting the correct amount of protein, we think that they tend to last about three and a half months. I have patients that have been doing it for 20 years, and they, you know, I have a few of them that can come twice a year and be perfect. So the more frequently you do it, the better you'll do. Um, and a lot of times what we see is people that stick with a regimen and come in, start to get duration that's really much longer. <clears throat> the other thing we see sometimes is uh, after a while, patients will sort of form a bond with one product or another, um, and they'll find that one product lasts for four months and another for three. Very, very patient specific. So we see a lot of that. Um, the next question we get a lot of is, uh, you know, injections are $200 in this place and $400 in your place. What's the difference? And the difference typically is twofold. Number one, the integrity of the product um, and also the experience of the injector. So some places dilute out their products to try and get them to last longer, um, <clears throat> and we don't. We try and make sure that the products are used as directed. Let's see, there's a question, do you have to be in a certain age group to get these injections? Um, and the answer is no, you can be in any age group and get uh, injections with the botulinum toxins. In general, they don't really um, need to be done before 25 years old, but I do have a few patients that require them earlier. Um, so we see that pretty much any time is a good time to start. If you're genetically programmed to have wrinkles, then you might as well start treating them before they're etched in. <clears throat> Once they're etched in, we use a little bit of filler to try and get them unetched and more flat. And then we'll use a botulinum toxin type A to keep them from etching in further. Um, let's see, the next question is, can you exercise afterwards? We like to have people not exercise for the rest of the afternoon, but certainly the next day is fine. Um, let's see, the last question is, um, what are other places we inject? Uh, I like to inject in a variety of places. A lot of times we'll do the chin and the neck, and sometimes we'll do the underarms to treat sweating. And we have people that do that frequently, and what it does is it allows them to not have as much sweat and look great in their dresses. So I think that was a really nice session, and I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, any questions, feel free to call us. Thank you.